What's going on, everybody? Welcome in. We are here for Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast. You're in the right place if that's what you're looking for. Tuesday, September 19th, we have a full 15-game slate to touch on. Brendan Glasheen with Sean Zarillo and Anthony DeBundo. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast if you have not done so already. We will be with you again on Friday before the week ends. And as I said yesterday, unless you uh, didn't join us, if you are joining us for the first time this week, we will have payoff pitch during the MLB postseason. So stay tuned for uh, coverage, and we will have an announcement when the season ends about how we're going to do that. So be on the lookout, uh, as we normally do. And again, we're, we're sweating out win totals and player props, our pl season-long player props here down the stretch. So we'll work some of that in if it fits the conversation. But uh, Zarello, let's start with a best bet for a full Tuesday slate. What do you have? So based on pricing last night, would have been the Houston Astros. This has moved a bit closer to, I think, where it should be this morning. But the first five lines sitting around minus 159, minus 160, still playable up to about that price. And I'll tell you why I really like the Astros tonight and would even parlay them probably at minus 155 if you find something else that you like on this card at minus money or as a cross sport piece. But the Orioles have basically walked me off the last two days. We're on the road yesterday. Uh, and they've walked off three bets against me uh, at the crucial final inning in the past three days, uh, twice against the Astros yesterday, flair single for Ryan O'Hearn in the fifth inning to kill a first five bet. And then the three run home run in the ninth inning by Cedric Mullins to win the full game line after walking off the Rays at home the day before on a comeback in the ninth. So the Orioles are really frustrating me in recent days, but also those past two days, they've had to really dive deep into their bullpen. And I bet the Astros yesterday partially because they had to go deep into their bullpen in that series against the Rays. Well, now they've got four of their key relievers who have pitched directly on back-to-back -back days and may not necessarily be available tonight. Uh, Yenier Cano only threw about nine pitches, 12 pitches combined over the past two days. So it's possible that the Orioles let him pitch a third straight day. But Danny Kaloum, uh, they have two other relievers that, you know, I'm blanking on, but are there uh, Fujinami and one more, Siano Perez, yeah, I believe, too. who are their key relievers who have pitched back-to-back -back days now. The Astros, Rafael Montero, I believe, has thrown three out of four days. So he's the one arm I'd kind of point to in their pen and say, probably not going to pitch tonight. But the Astros should have a relatively substantial bullpen edge, assuming those guys are out for the Orioles tonight or just that reduced effectiveness compared uh, to where you'd normally expect them to be. And then on top of that, just comparing the relative searings in the floors of the two starting pitchers, Kyle Gibson, basically a one-pitch guy has a sharp slider, but the Astros hitters have seen him quite a bit. Jose Abreu, good career numbers against him in the AL Central. Wonder if he's going to talk to the Astros guys and kind of help them, guide them with a plate approach against Gibson. But as a team, they have around an 800 OPS against Gibson throughout their career. And he is a one-pitch guy. As I said, they can focus on that slider, uh, look to lay off of it. And his numbers, his underlying pitch modeling numbers are trending down as this season is reaching its end. And then finally, Hunter Brown, just a much more diverse arsenal. His numbers also trending down as the citizen is wearing along. His pitch modeling numbers kind of pointing to an ERA above 4.5. But I've sort of downgraded Brown and downgraded Gibson by a similar amount as this season has moved on. So still view a really relatively similar gap between them as I would have made earlier in the year. I've just downgraded both pitchers uh, compared to where they were previously. So the Astros, as I said, in both halves tonight, there is still actionable value on that first five line at minus 160. But the full game line is really where I saw the bigger edge last night, considering the bullpen discrepancy. And as I said, if you want to bet it at minus 155 at a parlay piece, I'm not going to argue against that. I'd prefer to get minus 150 or better as a straight bet, but projected this closer to minus 160. So I think you can dabble with this small parlay as well. Okay, good stuff. Good breakdown. Um, yeah, that was a wild game last night. Cedric Mullins. Yes. Having him. Yeah, having him back is massive. Just the back Baltimore. and forth. And, it, you know, it's – I look – I bring this up all the time, but I look for the teams every year who come back against people late, and the Astros, since their lineup has been fully healthy, has been doing it. The Orioles have been doing it all year. So if this is the ALCS, like, that's – that's wouldn't surprise me at all. These are the two teams in the AL who come back on people constantly, and that's what I want in the playoffs and have two of the better will puns as well, so. Uh, Batista health status still in question. Seems like mm -hmm. there's a chance he may come back for the Orioles, and obviously they want to make a serious World Series run. They're gonna need him. Okay, Debundo, uh, what do you got for us for a best bet here today? 
Yeah, I like the Astros as well. I'll just continue to add on to that. You know, Gibson stuff, it's actually kind of a, a parallel to last season for Kyle Gibson where the stuff plus dropped off by about the same amount for the beginning of the season compared to the end. And he's he's always been an innings eater kind of pitcher. Uh, and you just wonder like how much gas is left in the tank. I'm concerned about Hunter Brown as well. So I, I would also look toward the over here because Brown is, you know, a rookie who's hitting kind of like a innings limit potentially of, of where he's losing some effectiveness. Yeah. But definitely agree the bullpen usage for Baltimore is uh, alarming and and look Hyde has has been very aggressive in in deploying his bullpen when absolutely needed. Now they have a little bit more of a cushion in the division, two and a half games plus the tiebreaker clinched. Uh, you could see him ease off a little bit for a couple of days here, even if they drop the games, knowing that uh, they've they've kind of pushed for this lead. That's similar to what they did. Uh, earlier this year when they had the big series win against Tampa, they pushed Felix and Cano, pitching them every day, tons of pitches, and then just didn't use them the next series. So uh, that's something that Hyde's been kind of, you know, maximizing his relievers for the biggest games. Probably not going to, I don't think, I'd be shocked if we saw Cano tonight and the rest of that bullpen. It also isn't that good of a bullpen right now. <laughs> so uh, that that are, certainly factors in. Uh, also, Yiner Diaz might play for Houston, should play. It's his day. Maldonado played yesterday, so... Uh, better lineup and better pitch framing numbers. And he's just the better catcher than Maldonado at the moment. So uh, that helps the Houston lineup as well. My best bet. We are going to go with the Boston, Texas over eight and a half runs. We were just talking off air about Nate Yavaldi, who's going to pitch for Texas. Look, he's back from injury off the injured list technically, but the fastball velocity is not back at all. Uh, and if you look at his numbers, you know, his last start, uh, before going to the injured list again, was July 18th. He had a 93.2 velocity average on his fastball. Uh, that was the lowest mark he'd had all season. Keep in mind, early in the season, Yavaldi was hitting 96.7, 95.3, 97.5, 96.4. So he gets injured on July 18th, 93.2. Comes back, three starts back, 93.8, 94.4, back to 93.6 in his last start against Toronto. And mm. he has not been particularly good in those starts. And I think the market is, is kind of overvaluing him as a result, three strikeouts, three walks, his last outing since returning, he's got as many strikeouts as walks. Uh, and he's given up three homers in about seven, seven innings. So, you know, they're, they're trying to ramp him up, but I don't know what they're going to get out of him. If he's only able to throw three to four innings, uh, because their bullpen has been kind of stretched over the weekend as well. So I like the over there, Tanner Houck, uh, another guy, you know, I, I don't think he's a starter. And I'm, I'm starting to become a believer in that. I think he's going to be a reliever. They're trying to stretch him into a starter and he's been okay at times, but the consistency has not been there. The command has been really inconsistent as well. He, he still can't get lefties out and he's uh, had real problems with walks, 11 walks in his last five outings. Uh, so, you know, the, the walk issues and the split platoon issues just kind of scream to me a reliever. And so I think he's going to have problems uh, going deep into this game. Both bullpens should get in early. And I think there's going to be lots of runs. So eight and a half, I would play it up to nine in that game. Okay, very good. Uh, I just read this too. So I've been very Patriot-centric lately. The uh, Tristan Casas has been shut down for the rest of the year too, which kind of bums mm. me out as a as a fan. Yeah, but, uh, Yoshida's out of gas too. Like that lineup has kind of taken a hit. Yep. That is one concern. I was Yoshida, just that's where um, I was going playing, with that. So, okay. Playing the WBC and then, you know, they, they've talked about, you know, how much more travel there is, fewer off days, first year in, in the U.S. from the Japan. We've seen this with uh, other players that have come over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he has been pretty bad, one of the worst players in baseball uh, in the last six weeks. So certainly uh, they've been, you know, bringing in some new guys. You know, Rafaela's in, in, intriguing out there, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get better defensively, but they are still one of the worst defenses in baseball as well. It certainly uh, has not helped their case this year. Thank you. Thank you, Haim. Once again, we said bye to Haim Bloom last Friday. Uh, if you missed that, Zarello, I know you were out last week, so I had a quick 30 seconds on Haim Bloom. Uh, let's stay on the Red Sox and the Rangers because, Zarello, you actually do like the Red Sox today as an underdog pick. Yeah, I don't mind the Red Sox. You know, as, as Anthony alluded to, these younger guys they brought up, Ilya Rayu, Sedan, uh, Sedan Rafael, like they've injected a little bit of youth into this lineup, and I – do not mind uh, taking a shot against Nathan Eovaldi. The Rangers really haven't let him go deep at all uh, since he's come back off the IL. As Anthony mentioned, the velocity down. It seems pretty evident that he's pitching injured. And if the Rangers were not in the thick of a wild card race, he might be shut down for the season, especially in light of the contract they gave him. The fact that Max Scherzer 
uh, injured. Um, I'm not sure if they have him for next year, if Scherzer's a free agent, but I mean, the Rangers have dealt with a number of pitching injuries and, uh, they're just trying to get to the finish line here. Um, and they basically have to play head to head with Seattle at some point over the next 10 days or so, which will ultimately decide the division. Um, most likely so that, you know, considering or should decide that final wild card spot potentially. So. I do think they just need to kind of get through these games against other teams, and they're going to be focusing on those games against Seattle. Um, now, they have been very aggressive pulling Evaldi out of the game relatively quickly. Like the moment he gets in trouble the second time through the lineup, he is out of there. So if you do see early runs, I wouldn't mind betting a live under. And I know Anthony alluded to these bullpens not being great, just based on the game dynamics, though. And once Evaldi's out of there, you're going to see a new reliever ever rating for Texas. So if you get like an under 11 and a half in the third inning, by the time you have all these coming out, something I consider taking a look at, you know, odd number plus the half a run uh, just to kind of get this to a bullpen game and keep the scoring relatively in check. But from a pregame perspective, certainly view the Red Sox with the starting pitching advantage and want to be on the Red Sox before the first inning. So, uh, you know, we talk about with MMA fights, you know, sometimes like this guy is the side from a pre-fight perspective. Well, the Red Sox should have their most success here in the early innings against Rivaldi, I would suspect. So projected them closer to plus 126. You can get plus 143 right now. Get that down to about plus 135 pregame. And then, as I said, maybe target a live under as the Rangers Yankee Evaldi. Okay. Yeah, one more thing. You know, Evaldi's been pitching less. And so you'd think that right. they know that he's going in shorter stints, that he could bring more juice. Mm. And we've seen this. Mm-hmm. We've seen less juice. Um, so that's even more. Good alive. point. Very good point. There's- where is the Texas bullpen at going into today? Will Smith got blown up last night, so he's unavailable. That might be an upgrade uh, to their bullpen, given how he's pitched lately. Uh, they did use a bunch of guys over the weekend. Not a ton yeah. yesterday because they were down. Um, so uh, their bullpen as a whole is not very good. It's clearly below average. So that, that also, I think, plays into Boston, who does have uh, – their bullpen's overachieved this year. No, sure. I, I handicapped the two bullpens basically the same. I had them both at like a 4.3 ERA projection. So uh, Texas, huge defensive advantage. I think that's the one thing you can point to in this matchup, like the athleticism, the defense. That definitely points Texas's way. But starting pitching Red Sox and, uh, you know, slight offensive for ta- Texas, but it's not as substantial as you might suspect. I think they're better against lefties and righties. Hmm. Where's our pal Billy Ward? I'm starting to think now uh, a Yurfi bet here on the uh... – yeah, or yeah, the, that's interesting. Uh, I would want to see where the, the number is juiced relative to the full game line, but I made the total 8.8, 8, um, so it should be slightly juiced to the under based on that projection. Uh, but yeah, I uh, you know, then you factor in the fact that the starting pitchers compared to the bullpens, it would get it closer to even if not uh, juicing it to the over, so or to the, mm-hmm. to the yes in the first thing. So yeah, definitely want to check out that market. I, I don't bet the Yurfies and Nerfies, but uh, finding a way to get runs against the Evaldi or even betting the Red Sox over half a run in the first inning or uh, their first three team total, potentially, that might be a way to target it as well. First three is the innings that Evaldi should be in this matchup. So if you want to bet a first three money line, that might be a different approach too. I'm looking, sp- I'm curious, uh, you know, and if you are a props person, uh, I would look to target the lefties in this lineup. I know Corey Seager is like, everybody knows how good Corey Seager is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, somebody maybe like a, uh, a Nate Lowe could be undervalued in this in this this uh, market just because Hauk has had so many issues with lefties throughout his career. Our presenting sponsor, BetMGM, uh, first run, first inning run, yes, minus 110, no, minus mm-hmm. 115. Yeah, that sounds about right. I was going to say like, Based on the total being 8.8, it should be like plus 105 or plus 110, just, you know, taking a derivative of that, but then you have to flip it because of the starting pitching. So then it should be minus 110. Yeah, like my mind said minus 110, so that's probably about right. Okay, DeBundo's got another underdog for us. And then Zarillo, I think you've got an angle on this team as well. you got the Giants who are in the thick of this NL wildcard race. Yeah, they are, and they're in the thick of it against the Arizona Diamondbacks who are also in the thick of it and now leading. They are the favorite uh, in the, at least in the, if you just pull up the standings uh, to get the five seed. This is a huge two game series here mm-hmm. because not only do 
the you know the games matter, but to the tiebreaker matters. Uh, right now, you know San Francisco needs to get one of these two games. If they lose both, they're pretty much done as far as I'm concerned because they're going to fall behind and then lose the tiebreaker to Arizona. So huge couple of games here. We talked, Zerillo and I uh, saw each other in July and we, I was writing a column, you know, 10 pitchers or trying to find pitchers that we were looking to bet against. And we kind of looked at each other and we were looking through numbers and we were like, how is Zach Allen doing what he did in the first half of the season? Because the stuff has not been that great. The command, um, you know, he has had some hit by pitch slash walk issues in the past and then put yep. together like a three month stretch where he walked nobody. Uh, and that was the first half of the season. And that was really, you know, dominant gallon. He has not been the same pitcher in the second half. And and he has certainly regressed. He's fallen out of the Cy Young race after he was the the favorite with Strider at the halfway point to win it. So, you know, if you look at his, you know, game logs, what's changed? Uh, he's been getting barreled more, which to me is a, is a sign of command more than anything. And he's been walking more batters. So, the, you know, the walks per nine are up. Uh, three walks against the Dodgers. He had two against the Mets in his last outing. This is in five innings. So this is a, a notable increase for him. Uh, and I do have um, my concerns that Gallon is overvalued in the market generally. And so I'm going to take the Giants. You can find plus 130 out there, plus 125 at BetMGM uh, to win this matchup. Giants, huge bullpen advantage and haven't really used uh, a ton of their heaviest bullpen arms. Doval pitched on Friday. Uh, but you know, even though they had these crazy games at Coors Field, uh, none of the games were particularly close. So they did not use their highest leverage guys in heavy usage. So they're going to be able to deploy uh, the f- the full Kapler for the next two days, and I think it's a big advantage over this Diamondbacks team that does not have much depth at all behind Gallon. Okay, and Alex Cobb hasn't been that bad as of late. Um, yeah, he's. I mean, we know what Alex Cobb is at this point. Like, yeah. You know, it's funny because last year he was, we kept saying, oh my gosh, he's having, he's having, he's running so bad. Like he keeps giving, look at his XERA, look at his, his metrics. They're so much better because the Giants defense is bad. And now early in the season, it was like, well, Alex Cobb, he's so lucky. I mean, he, you know, look at what he's doing this year. His metrics are so bad. He's, he's running so good. Um, but he's, he's pretty much stabilized into what we, we, we know him to be. All right. Zarilla, what, what can you add here for uh, this analysis about the Giants being the better, uh, team maybe to bet on today than Zach Gallon and the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I made the line closer to plus 118, so certainly like it where it is. Uh, the biggest advantage for the Diamondbacks here is defense and athleticism. Top three defensive team, Giants 22nd in defensive runs saved. And they're back to playing like Brandon Crawford at shortstop and, you know, a lesser defensive lineup than we've seen from them at points throughout this year. So uh, big athleticism, athleticism advantage for Arizona. But as... Anthony alluded to huge bullpen advantage for the Giants. So I think that sort of neutralizes it. Uh, I have the Giants at 3.7 bullpen projected ERA, Diamondbacks at 4.3. And I think the biggest piece is, you know, how you project the starting pitching matchup and the delta that you project between Zach Allen and Alex Cobb. I think the betting market views them as about a half run differential, like an almost a full tier break between the two. Uh, I would view the gap closer to about a quarter of a run on a season long year. So I think, I think the gap is, you know, if you have gallon at a 3.5 year, array, I wouldn't have Cobb at a four. I'd have Cobb at a 3.75. I actually have them closer to four and four and a quarter respectively. And that shows you how low I am on Zach Allen. You know, when I'm projecting Zach Wheeler, at like a three year, array, right. Having Zach Allen closer to a four and they're both in the thick of the side, Cy young race with one another, Spencer Strider, I have closer to a three ERA projection. So I make Zach Allen almost a full run worse than the guy he's been, guys he's been competing against in the Cy Young race. So yes, uh, very much agree. Zach Allen has been overperforming for, through much of this year, has been overvalued throughout much of this year. It has pained me because I feel like I was one of the first people on the Zach Allen train back when he was traded for Jazz Chisholm and went to Arizona. And I was betting on him right out of the gate. And I was like, I love this guy. And then coming into the year, everybody was hyped about Zach Allen for the Cy Young. And I was like, guys, the projections don't really justify it. You know, how are you betting him at 15 to 1, 25 to 1? He's projected to finish 15th in the National League and war. So there became a point at which Zach Allen went from underrated to overrated. I still believe he remains in the overrated category, and we'll see if that resets for next year. But yeah, I've been betting against Zach Allen, one of my favorite pitchers, by and large throughout the season. And it seems like in the second half, we finally had success with it. So sticking with it another couple times down the stretch here. And it's kind of a win-win scenario for me too, with our snakes to make the playoffs, take it at plus 425, uh, you know, mm-hmm. if they lose this game tonight, we're still kind of covered in the futures market. So uh, happy to take a shot, though, on the Giants here in both halves. And 
if you can get plus 140 or better in the first five innings, as I said, you know, I like the full game line, but plus 140 or better first five, I'd take that too. The uh, Diamondbacks are the team I'm officially uh, rooting for in the, in the sweepstakes of who do the Phillies get to play in the first round. If we can't get oh, the yeah. Reds, I would like the Diamondbacks because mm-hmm. I think Gallon and Kelly are gettable and I don't trust their bullpen. Yeah, yeah Merrill Kelly, another two, guy. I want no part of Justin Steele in the playoffs. <laughs> if I can help. Uh, or that Cubs lineup. Very it's poetic. Very poetic by DeBundo to reference the meeting in July. There was a meeting of the minds. We tried to figure Brendan this out. Was there. And now it's all coming to fruition. It was just beautifully done. I mean, I we asked were, you. We, like, were, we were rooting on the National League together, uh, <laughs> and, and Stucky, Stucky was begging for Elias Diaz to bunt. And uh, then he, <laughs> he, hit, then he hit a pinch hit home run to, to win the game, <laughs> and then he was begging for David Bednar to come in. Uh, so was Zerillo. And forget, our guy Topper went to, went to Craig Kimbrell to Craig get the Kimbrell. save, and it was a big win. No, I forgot about it. It's, it's Stucky, I remember you used tweeting, like, why don't they bunt anymore in baseball? Like, it, oh, okay. The all-star uh, game. Let's lay one down against Bautista. Yeah, geez. Also, Zerillo um, saying Felix Bautista is so good that it's a free scoreless inning for the American League, and then he blew the game. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing like writing a, uh, a full all-star game preview and reverse jinxing your own bet into, you know, winning <laughs> into by a calling win. Felix win Bautista a free inning. I also might have injured him, so I don't know. That might be my fault. All right. No, I think what Zerillo... injured him was was I I went all in at the trade deadline in fantasy and, and traded for him. That's what that's what injured mm. Bautista. Yeah. Zerillo, you've got a couple more, and then we can uh we can get out of here. How about the Royals? They delivered last night. They did. Uh but they could you know, like so I have the under nine and a half and I have the Royals money line, and I'm like, all right, base is loaded, four two, bottom of the eighth. Like either they're gonna cash the under. Or they're going to maybe take the lead. And maybe I can cash a 5-4 win. They get to 5-4. And the Guardians throw a wild pitch. And it ends 6-4. Like, I can't cash a 5-4. Whatever. Whatever, guys. Uh, Royals body line today. You know, we talked about the Guardians being checked out rarely at this time of year. Good example of that yesterday. Uh, And it's also like, it's the kind of time of year, too, where... Terry doesn't have to, Terry Francona doesn't have to like play the matchups and like get guys in and out of innings. He can let a guy go a little bit longer if he wants to, if he wants to let him get work. So it's like the guardians haven't been eliminated yet, but they know they're eliminated. Uh, But yeah, I mean, the Royals are just undervalued here. They should be closer to about plus plus one twenty. You're getting plus one forty on them. You know, I'm not going to sit here and like wax poetic about the fact that there's advantage in this, in this matchup for the Royals, I just, I think Logan Allen is a bit overrated and his bot ERA, his underlying pitch modeling metrics are trending closer to five, whereas his expected ERA and preseason projections were closer to four. So I think Allen may be wearing down after making his major league debut. Not sure where he is in his uh, innings compared to his career high. I actually want to check that real quick because that would actually just make much more sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a guy who's never thrown uh this many innings in his career. So I think Logan Allen uh, definitely, or at least in uh, five years, uh, this is his career high. So Logan Allen probably wearing down, down the stretch. Um, And I just think the Royals slightly undervalued today as they have been for the past six weeks or so. Uh, Phillies and Braves under nine. Uh, Christopher Sanchez, a guy I like quite a bit. And I think he does give the Phillies a bit more of a fighting chance in a series with the Braves. And I think this is a good chance for him to show how effective he can be against this Braves lineup. So Spencer Strider been getting unlucky based on the underlying metrics for a lot of this year. You could debate that as much as you want. Uh, Debate how justifying you is of being considered for Cy Young or not. I don't really care, but he's been a bit unlucky and just should allow fewer home runs than he has and should be a bit more effective than he has been. So Phillies and Braves under nine also seem to have some decent underweather there tonight. Uh, Pirates and Cubs under nine. Our Wrigley Field under system did trigger for this game. When I bet it, only one book had a line out. They had nine minus 115. I projected this closer to 8.3, I believe. So eight and a half at even money would be a bet for me as well, if that moves down. And then finally, the Tigers and the Dodgers under nine. I was on the over last night. We're switching to the under tonight. And we're also going to look to target Ryan Pepio in the first five innings, potentially, is a big favorite. This guy's numbers are really coming alive. And I think, uh, you know, we discussed yesterday how the Dodgers pitching depth, we've discussed recently how the Dodgers pitching depth is falling apart. 
I think Pepio might be breaking out down the stretch here. And with Bobby Miller, these young kids may be the key focal points of the Dodgers pitching in the playoffs. So keep an eye on Ryan Pepio as we come down the stretch here and then into the playoffs. I think he's a guy we may be betting on. Imagine saying at the beginning of the year that the 97 or 8 win Dodgers are going to start Bobby Miller and Ryan Pepio in their first two playoff games. That's and that uh, I may bet on both because I think they're both <laughs> underrated and potentially like a And there's a good arm, chance you know? those two playoff games come against Freddie Peralta and Corbin Burns. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so, uh, but the way the National League is set up this year, uh, it is really interesting. And I, I want to talk about this. You know, we'll get into this more in the playoffs, and I'll probably say it again in like two weeks. But um, the Braves are going to be able to use Strider and Freed on regular rest if they want in games one, two, four, and five of the National League Division Series. Uh, the same will apply for the Brewers with their big three. They can use the big three in all five games of an NLDS, assuming they can win their first round in two games. Uh, and then the Dodgers, same thing. You know, they'll be able to use just three starters potentially to get through the DS um, with Pepio, a bullpen game probably, and Miller. I think that you know Kershaw and, and as part of a bullpen game is probably what they're looking at now. So it's going to be really interesting because there is the extra off day that the National League gets this year that the American League had last year, uh, built into that first five game series. So uh, that will be a fascinating way to try to figure out who's going to pitch where in the playoffs. All right. Good stuff, man. Yeah, that's true. You guys, Tabundo, correct me if I'm wrong. You're already betting Bobby Miller to win Cy Young next year, right? I will be. I think, I, uh, obviously, I think, there's a line out yet. I think I that mean, was Tanner. I think I'm on Grayson, though. Oh. I, Grayson, yeah, Bobby, Bobby Miller, we got, Grayson we got Rodriguez. List, yeah. uh, obviously, the two leading characters. Christian Javier people. again, maybe? What? <laughs> po- Definitely not diving. Post type post type breakout, Javier Christian Javier, Warriors. 120 to 1. Uh, I think Cole Reagans is going to be a guy that everybody's going to try to bat and he's going to get hurt. Uh, yeah, I think I they traded that. him because they don't that's, that's see a- his arm as being sustainable long-term. He, I think he's going to be awesome every time he pitches, but I don't think he'll get through full seasons. Lynn Sanity um, run. My buddy likes Tarek Skubal. Maybe, uh, yeah, really and, trust and, him hey, the Tigers are going to be fun next year. Uh, who's this kid that they brought up in the past week who I've bet on twice already, uh, with the hyphenated name. Um, Oh man, I can't. Reese Re- Olson's good. Scoobles good. Eddie's back. It's a good rotation. All right, gents. Uh, good stuff. Debundo, Sean Zarillo, they'll be live in the oh, Gibson action Long. network. Sorry, Gibson Long. Uh, just, just. I mean, I won't be here for his next start, but we're betting Sorry, Gibson Long. Just assume the rest of the way. Tigers. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, again, you can join us Monday, Tuesday, and Friday during the baseball season for Payoff Pitch. We are presented by BetMGM for Zarillo and DeBundo. Find those guys in the app should they add anything else. Today, Brendan Glasheen signing off. Thanks for listening, everybody. Great Tuesday, and we'll talk to you again at the end of the week. 